Friend of the channel, Adam Stern of the SBJ, has dropped an absolute bombshell about IndyCar and its future today. Porsche is one of a couple OEMs showing interest in joining IndyCar, per his sources. Stern reports that talks have advanced past the preliminary stage, but no indications, or there have been no indications, that a deal has been signed yet, and the talks could still fall apart. Porsche would be a major coup for the series. You don't say, Adam. But all kidding aside, this could be one of the biggest stories IndyCar racing has had in the last 20 years, and certainly the biggest one since Chevrolet announced they would be re-entering the series in 2012. Manufacturers, of course, bring a ton of money, a ton of press, and um, no manufacturers usually bring more press than Porsche. Uh, Porsche has an incredibly huge following, an incredibly huge fan base. Just look at any sports car race that Porsche participates in. Go over to the Porsche Plots, their own personal little parking space, and just try to count how many 911s you see on the grounds of a sports car racing event. And um, this, I mean, this would be absolutely massive if this is to happen. Now, we're going to have to read through or read between a few lines here because it was, there, there have been several stories relating to possible manufacturers entering IndyCar either in 2021 or 2022, whenever they decide uh, finally what the, when the right new regulations are going to come out. So originally we heard from Adam Stern that there was one manufacturer interested. The one that was most interested was of German heritage. It was a German brand. Now, Porsche is also a German brand. We're going to need to keep that in mind for later. We later heard from Marshall Pruitt that one manufacturer was essentially, in his words, a slam dunk, meaning they were pretty much 99% going to show up uh, to IndyCar. They were going to sign up for the series. Okay, but what Marshall dropped, or the hint that Marshall dropped after he said that, was that they would be looking for a fourth manufacturer for IndyCar starting as soon as 2021. So now we get this naming of Porsche. This is the first manufacturer we've had named as a possible entrant into IndyCar starting in 2021 or 2022. They are German, but I do not believe that they are the manufacturer that Pruitt claimed was a slam dunk. I believe that this is the hypothetical, at the point that Pruitt brought it up, fourth manufacturer. Now, why do we think this? Well, I think it's very simple. Look at Stern's wording. He's very cautious when reporting this particular story. And in fact, on the live stream that I had Adam Stern join, when, he, when I asked him about Marshall Pruitt's language uh, being as strong as it was, the slam dunk, like I said, uh, Stern said that should be a pretty good indicator that whichever manufacturer Marshall was talking about, they were probably going to make a commitment. The fourth manufacturer, I'm guessing Stern did some digging and has come up with a name. I still believe that the first manufacturer, and of course you guys have probably already seen the video where I speculated about which German marquee would be the most likely as a third uh, entrant into IndyCar, for 2021, I speculate that it's BMW, and I think BMW will still be uh, either named soon as a possibility uh, from a credible source, or uh, they have already signed up. And I, I do have to all, as well say that this information is coming from very credible sources. Adam Stern, Marshall Pruitt, particularly Stern, right most of the time. So, I mean, I think I totally trust that Adam Stern has heard this from enough sources that he feels confident to go public with it because otherwise um, I don't think he would. In that video where I speculated, and I continue to speculate, I, I'm sticking by it, that BMW is one of the manufacturers, uh, one of the two manufacturers. They're both German. I think it's BMW and now Porsche. But in that video, I talked about Porsche's chances uh, and, and why I didn't think at the time that they were uh, candidate number one from Germany that was going to be showing up in IndyCar starting in 2021. Let's roll that clip. Porsche, that's an interesting one and one that I unfortunately think is not going to happen. Of course, Porsche 
has some open wheel experience, specifically IndyCar experience. 1979, they nearly put the 935 motor in a uh, Parnelli with Danny and Gaius, who would have been doing the driving. That didn't happen. They showed up again in 1987 through 1990 with Al Holbert's Porsche team. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot of success. They got one win with Teo Fabi in 1989. They've had, they've been rumored to be involved again, kind of that whole Volkswagen Audi thing around the merger with uh, Champ Car and uh, Indy Racing League. But again, they were kind of affected by Dieselgate. They were racing in the same se series that Audi was, the World Endurance Championship. And of course, for uh, Porsche is entering Formula E next year. So I think their single-seater, uh, high-budget racing car thing is kind of taken care of at this point. And I don't think they would stand to gain a whole lot from IndyCar racing. So what we have now is Porsche seemingly putting all their eggs in the single-seater racing basket. Uh, one of the points I brought up in that video was that Porsche was making an awfully large commitment to Formula E, or is making an awfully large commitment to Formula E. Of course, they pulled out of LMP1, and it looked like it looked like at the time that they were following the rest of their Volkswagen contingent uh, and heading into electric racing, uh, trying to make up some uh, some lost political points uh, for Dieselgate. That's what it seemed, but it seems always like Porsche always want to keep racing. It seems like a brand that is very, it's very important for Porsche to continue to uh, participate in high levels of motorsport. And believe me, I'm not trying to slam Formula E here, but until they have an event that's even a fifth as big as the Indianapolis 500, they aren't a top level of motorsport. And I'm also not slamming GTE Pro when I say, you know, Porsche has 18 Le Mans wins. Um, and none of them come out of the GTE Pro class. Uh, the, the car that wins Le Mans is the P1 car. That's the car that gets on the, the, uh, the posters and the front pages of the paper. Uh, so Porsche not having a presence in, in top-level motorsport uh, doesn't really fit the brand for what it is. Um, of course, we know their IndyCar history was uh, tumultuous, only getting one win with Teo Fabi, like I said in the previous clip, uh, but they do have 18, 24 hours of Le Mans victories. They have zero at the Indianapolis 500. So for Porsche, I would imagine that this would be a really fascinating challenge for them going forward. And again, Adam Stern said a major coup. I think, uh, I, I almost think that's an understatement. I think Porsche with their motorsports pedigree, with their heritage, with their track record coming in, uh, it would be so unbelievably massive for IndyCar, um, especially because so many of the hardcore racing fans were lost uh, in the split. Many of them went to sports cars. And guess who uh, has been dominant in sports cars? Porsche. And I don't want to get too far out in the weeds here because we're already pretty much openly speculating at this point. But what teams might switch? Obviously, I had a few for BMW because there are some teams with connections to BMW. Uh, would that be a manufacturer? But Porsche, things get a little bit more uh, head-scratching because there aren't a whole lot of teams in IndyCar currently that have a lot of Porsche connections. So would Porsche bring in their own teams? Would they hire uh, Core Autosport, for example, which currently runs their IMSA GT program? Maybe hire Colin Braun, maybe bring in a Nick Tandy, or their Formula E driver, uh, uh, Brendan Hartley, who was at one point uh, tied to a Ganassi IndyCar ride. But then you think about Penske, and Penske Porsche always sounds pretty good, because of course, two of the most iconic race cars of all time, the 91730, the 1500 horsepower Can-Am car, as well as the LMP2 Porsche RS Spider in those beautiful DHL colors. Um, and those of you who are going to say, well, Penske is Ilmore and Ilmore is Chevy and, and Penske would never leave Ilmore to run another engine. Well, you'd be wrong because he's done it twice before. Well, once before he completely left Ilmore uh, when he switched over to the IRL. Honda got or Ilmore got the contract to build the Honda engines and the captain with his team got Toyota engines. So uh, Penske was sticking his hand in two cookie jars back in those days. So I don't know. This 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 is a this could be something that develops into something very major. Do I think something's going to happen 
or develop by the month of May. I think it's very late in the game. Another thing that we do know is we've heard from Mark Miles and Jay Fry that they could delay the regulations to 2022. I've said that a few times in this video, you know, kind of saying that 2022 year, because, you know, if you've got a manufacturer like Porsche and you've already got BMW, Chevy, and Honda signed up, and the other three are just fine with delaying things a year so that they can develop their stuff better, and then Porsche could develop their stuff uh, in the same or ample time to be prepared and not be Lotus. Though I don't think in any circumstance, Porsche will be any equivalent to what Lotus was in 2012. I know some people have brought that up, especially with, with new manufacturers. I think that's a little bit of Stockholm syndrome, to be honest with you. But uh, there's a potential that come 2021 or 2022, there will be four engine manufacturers in IndyCar and Porsche being potentially one of them is I can't even put into words how, how big major uh, that would be because again, well, they're not at Le Mans right now. They are in the GT category, but they're not in the top category. I mean, look at my shirt at the, I mean, this car was racing this nine, uh, 962 was racing at the same time that the Porsche cart IndyCar program was going on. So Porsche, you know, had a lot of eggs in this basket. They don't have a whole lot of eggs in a whole lot of baskets right now talking about major, major programs, and especially not in the United States. It's also kind of an interesting head-scratching thing that we hadn't heard a whole lot about a Porsche DPI, though many people would love to hear that flat six in a prototype. Well, this makes a little more sense. America is one of the biggest markets for Porsche globally. The Cayenne sells very well over here. It's one of the things that's kept Porsche afloat for this long, uh, being mostly a boutique, uh, a boutique uh, sports car manufacturer. They sell that SUV, and boy, we Americans love SUVs. And I suspect they will sell a lot of SUVs if they start enter, entering IndyCar racing and having success in the one major race that they haven't conquered yet. So let me know your comments down below what you think of Porsche potentially joining IndyCar in 2021 for the new engine regulations. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more IndyCar, Indy 500, and motorsports coverage, and I will see you in the next video.